you guys left your house to go to a thing. Do you know what the alternative was? Staying at home and watching everything that's ever been made. I beat Godfather is what I'm trying to say. I beat the Godfather. I beat all porn, if you really think about it. A lot of you were like, I could just jack off tonight. Yeah, you porn? No way. You Seth. Here we are. <laughs> that was dumb and I'm glad I did it. Um, I turned 40 this year. Like this is a crowd, a crowd of my demographic that's actually for that. They're like, yeah, us too. This isn't the college crowds I normally play with. They're like, ugh. They look at me like the old guy now. Like it's now old to be a millennial. I thought I was Gen X for until four years ago. <laughs> it's a very millennial thing not to know what you are, by the way. I'm like, millennial what? Yeah, I guess. I like the Gen, I like the Gen X. I identify with that. They have the cool clothing. They got the best music, dude. They got the fucking letter X. How strong is that right there? Gen Z, they're all. <laughs> that letter looks like your girlfriend's mad at you, you know? She gives you that, you know what you give her? Bam! X, right there. It's my favorite letter. It's the best letter. Always associated with the coolest stuff. X always marks the spot. Never H for here. <laughs> You guys ever read files? Like boring, regular files? How lame, or no one wants to get through those. X Files, though? <sighs> those files got a TV show. <laughs> Anyone have 2020 vision? That's really good vision. You know what's better? X ray vision, duh. Oh, you can see far? I can see her tits. A lot of good R rated movies out there. Yeah, you know what's better? X-rated movies, guys. X-rated movies are actually so good that the only way to make them better, add more X's. Double X, triple X. They're getting better, I'm getting harder. Tired of your girlfriend? Make her an ex-girlfriend. All right, the letter X. Yeah, I rest my case. That joke? Extraordinary. All right, so... Millennials get a lot of flack, you know? We, we, we kind of always have from jump. You know, you're, you're, you're soft, you're weak, you're not focused, you're ruining our economy again. It's always the previous generation that'll shit on the next one. And it's always for awful, like, dumb reasons, you know? It's always like, this generation is soft and weak. Like, what does that mean? And then they give you a dumb reason. Well, because you don't know how to drink. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's always an uncle, you guys don't know how to, we knew how to drink. When we were kids, it was way different. We get blasted out of our minds, steal a car, drive to Tijuana, bang hookers, $3 a pop. What? That's a story I'm supposed to be proud of? I don't look at the older generations as necessarily better, just different, you know? And it did go way crazier. I've heard stories where I'm like, that's not legal. <laughs> Like, drunk driving was legal till like, 1991. I don't know if anyone's aware of that, but everyone has a story like, yeah, we got wasted. What happened? Cops let us go home. They drove us home, actually, when I remember. Look at a bunch of bars now, not even in, like, New York, places where people drive. The bars close, and it's just shivering 27-year-old. Oh, it's freezing. I forgot my jacket. You think I can Amazon Prime one to this location? What's... Should we call a car? Let's call the... What's the name of this place? I already forgot. It's crazy. What's my... Do you know my address? Do you remember my address? What's my name? What am I even... What's all... Like, if that guy's phone died right there, he'd be like, I guess I live here now. <laughs> Just pulls a piece of cardboard over his head. I think 70% of homeless people are just lost millennials. I really... <laughs> Like, if you walked up, you're like, hey, man, how long have you been here? You give me a lightning cord, bro, I'll let you know right now. <laughs> Dude, I live two blocks from here. How crazy is that? How did I not... How did I not look? How did I not think to look?
We were locked up a long time. A lot of a lot a lot of my friends went went crazy. We had a quarantine for like a year here, you know? You just see it in their eyes, they're like, I have some thoughts I need to tell you about them. <laughs> like I lost no one to COVID. I lost eleven friends to conspiracies. Just <laughs> goodbye. You see it. And you never see it coming, you know? You'll be talking about something, they go, oh, by the way, and then it's just conversation landmine. That's what they are. <laughs> Look, man, I just think that there's a concentration of wealth that... T oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes later, it just depends on your definition of science. <laughs> If I move, it just can all blow up if I just step off of these right now. <laughs> Five minutes after that. It's pretty simple. All I'm saying is a lot of these politicians are lizard aliens from another dimension. They're like, I'm stepping off the landmine. This isn't worth it. This isn't worth it. That's a real one, dude. I read, I read about it, okay? I went lizard alien conspiracy. Blog after blog after website after failed high school dropout after... I mean, they're just... They write about it. It's a real conspiracy. People think lizard aliens, because it couldn't settle on one, it had to be a lizard, and both is even more evil. They can assume human form, whatever they want. They live in caves in Antarctica, for which is convenient, where no people are. And we all know about lizards that live in ice-cold climates. We've all heard of those. So they're all down there. You know, and I'm like, that's what you believe. Cool, cool, cool. And they're like, yeah, man. Look into it, dude. Just... Watch a couple of YouTube videos. I'm like, no, 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 I will not. I draw a hard line at just watch a few YouTube videos, okay? And I'll tell you why. Because these videos are really good. Like they're really, the graphics, I mean, it just looks like a real news network. The hosts are charismatic and like interesting sounding. And I'm dumb. Like, uh, that's a bad combo. You have shiny things and an idiot? You don't want that. I draw the line at three, you know, from experience. Three. We can all watch three, right? We're like, ah, look at these guys are so stupid. You get to like five or six, you're like, ah, these guys are making some good points, I think. I don't... Should, I mean, should we watch another? Should we sign up for the website? The, they have a Patreon. We can... There's just too many. There are, there, there are too many, man. Simpler in the 90s. We had three conspiracies back then. We all know them. Moon landing's fake. That's a classic, we all know that. JFK assassination, boom, another classic. And the biggest one, the biggest one, did Marilyn Manson remove his ribs to suck his own dick? <laughs> that kept us up at night. As 12 year olds? I mean, that was my homework. Forget science. I gotta figure out the rib situation. Just like you're looking at photos and hit parader. You're like, did they remove them? Like, can I do it? I don't probably have all my ribs yet. I'm only 12. Let's perform experiments. You're like, come on, bro, push me forward. It's not gay. Leave your homophobia out of this. If I touch it, you let go, then it's not gay. It's just science. Pre-technology, pre-all this stuff, that's how old I am. We didn't have mic packs back then, there were no cameras. A lot of comedy specials were drawn. That's how they, uh... <laughs> they were sketched out, and it took a lot of money and work. I remember one time, my friends and I were sitting, were sitting around at lunch, just trying to figure out, like, number stuff. You're like, how many people exist? How many are there? Like, a billion? Are there two billion? No way, there's never been two billion of anything. And then... This kid walks into the conversation who was the best liar I've ever known to this day. Right now, that kid has a successful YouTube channel. He walked into the conversation, what are you guys talking about? Right now, we're trying to figure out how old the oldest guy in the world is, okay? Our guess is 39. There's no one older than 39. Without blinking, he was like, no, no, I know the answer, 350. How did you suddenly, how do you know that? Because I'm a great older than you guys. Good point. It's a good point. All right, well, who told you? My older brother, he's two grades older. That basically makes him a wizard. He pushed him a little. How do you know that? Really? Like, why don't we ever see, hear about him on the news? He's like, simple. 
Pentagon keeps them in the basement. <laughs> Why? They're doing experiments. They want to figure out immortality. We're like, oh. I believe that all day. The rest of the school day, I thought there was just some bored old guy sitting in the basement of the Pentagon, just like playing drums with Marilyn Manson's ribs or something, you know? <laughs> I, was I went home, I'm like, Mom, Dad, guess what I learned? Great day at school. Guess what I learned? Oldest guy in the world, 350. <laughs> my dad turns around for what he was doing. He's like, oh, wow, that's cool. You know what I learned today, just now? My son is an idiot. <laughs> She's, all right, 39. Fine. <laughs> I just wanted to belong. That's why all these people do this. They just want to belong, you know? And it's easier than ever. You just start a YouTube channel tomorrow. <laughs> With any crack pop, I believe the earth is flat. Who else is like me and doesn't have a passport? <laughs> and then like 39 people join your ship. It's too much of everything. I sound like an old guy when I say that. There's too much of everything. Like there's too many shows. You know that Netflix released 42 brand new TV shows since the beginning of this sentence. <laughs> A lot of shows. <laughs> Everything's a network now. Everything's a streaming platform now. Bro, have you seen this new show on the Weather Channel? Oh my God, dude. It's... No, hear me out, man. It's really interesting. It's about a benevolent tornado, okay? And what it, what it does is it carves a path of love, believe it or not, throughout the South, repairing all the destruction that previous, more toxic, probably male tornadoes caused before it. It's called Category Care, and it's really... Like, I don't, well, no, I got a better one, dude. This is a little high concept, all right? This one's about a former special forces guy, like a tough guy, right? Gets discharged. What does he do next? Gets a sex change. So he can go undercover in the Catholic Church as a nun to fight corruption from within. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a show? Yeah. And it's a comedy, all right? So it's called Sister Seal, and you really should get into it. But here's the deal, it's a limited series. You can't just watch it on any platform, you know? You can't watch it on your iPad, your TV, or your phone. It's really limited. The only place you can see it, tiny little TV at my local gas pump. So head on down. <laughs> I am watching one show. I'm a TV monogamist. One show. It's a traditional show, too. It's about a drug dealer. Has to decide, he's at a crossroads in life. Am I gonna stay on the streets, defend this empire I've built, or am I gonna hang this life up? Go back to school, finish my education, become a role model for my two young kids. And that show airs uh, right outside my bedroom window every night. <laughs> it's called I Need to Move! <laughs> I spent the whole quarantine with my dog. Yeah, 12 months, just me and him. It almost broke us. It really did, it really tested our bond. It was a stress test. And I felt bad, man, you know? Cause he's my emotional support animal. And for a year, I was throwing so much emotion at that dog, he got to a point where he just ran out of support. <laughs> When I first got him, oh my God, we were this inseparable duo. He always missed me. Like, you know those, those videos you see of like a heartbroken dog like sitting next to his owner's casket after he died? That's what my dog looked like when I took a shower. Like he missed me all the time. Where were you? Don't ever do that again. Just followed me everywhere. Then we spent 12 months just locked down together. Now if I enter a room, he leaves it. <laughs> You guys ever seen a dog roll its eyes? <laughs> I have. Hey, buddy. Ugh. Be in my crate. <laughs> Closes the door behind them. I'm like, never taught you that? You're watching YouTube videos? Is the earth flat or not? Tell me now. <laughs> it was rough on him. It really was. It was, it, was, it was a tough go. I remember our rock bottom. Month 10, middle of the night. Got up to take a piss, and I walked through the kitchen, and then there he is, just sitting by himself at the kitchen table, just finishing a cigarette. 
wouldn't even look at me, you know? You were at that point where he's like, no. I'm like, buddy, what is it? What's wrong? He's like, get away from me. <laughs> well, come to bed. Let me go scratch you behind the... Get away from my ear. <laughs> well, come on. What you want? You want some peanut butter? How about some peanut butter? Oh, peanut butter with that hand? With the crying and jacking off hand for 11 months? No, thank you. No, thank you. And we talked it out. We sat there for an hour. We talked it out. I was like, all right, what is it that you want? He's like, I want more bacon for starters. All right, I want peanut butter, just not out of that hand. All right. You know what else? Someone needs to go on a walk. And it's not me, all right? Leave. Take the leash. Just give me some alone time. You know what else I got him? An emotional support animal. Um, I think he could use... I got him... Uh, I can't even take all the credit. I, my therapist told me to get him. Because we ran out of things for me to do. I've had depression and anxiety my whole life, okay? I'm not a whole, like I wasn't in diapers going like, put on some more see the socks. You know? <laughs> not like forever, you know, but like, I don't know, 11, 12. And just, I've tried, every, like, I've tried everything you can try. I got totally sober 10 years ago this April. Woo! I got, I don't know, I've only been happy for three. We're still got <laughs> a lot of work. Um, I moved from LA to New York, change, you know, change the scenery. I quit smoking cigarettes. I changed my diet. I started meditating. I started boxing. I did everything I could do. And I still, I got on medication, everything. And I would still go outside and be like, screw you, sunlight, and then want to go back in. And that's just the way it was. And my therapist sat me in. She's like, look, we've done everything. You don't want to take more meds. So I suggest emotional support animal. Get a dog, get a cat. They have giraffes now. Like, get whatever you want. <laughs> And I was like, what, really? She's like, yes, they'll be good for you. They give you structure, put you on a schedule. You can walk them, bathe them, feed them, brush them. I'm like, yeah, walk them and bathe them. Kind of sounds like you're offering me a job right now. Um, <laughs> work's the reason I'm here in the first place, lady. I fought her on it for, you know, a month or two. And then I finally was like, you know what? I, I'll do it. I'll try it. She recommended a rescue place. I drove to it. I got there and there's just all these dogs running around with just nowhere to call home, you know? And I walk and I look around and I was like, wow. And like, I see this dog in the corner and he's just kind of like sitting there, you know, not really being social with anyone. I'm like, it's like me. It's like me. <laughs> and then he like looks over and looks at me and then I get to see his full face and I look at him and I go, nah, he's ugly, I don't want that one. Um, <laughs> And you know, eventually I found my dog now and I saw him, I'm like, that's the guy right there. He looks pretty cool. By the time I got him home, about a 15 minute drive, I'm like, this dog's never allowed to die. I love him so much. You really bond with these animals, man. And my therapist was right, okay? I had stuff to do right away. I had, I had a job assigned and it was to dog proof my place, which I'd never done, I'd never had a dog. So, you know, I'd get home and take my jacket off and be like, here's good, you know, just anywhere. So I had to get everything off the ground. Dog proofing is getting everything from like here to here, or in my dog's case, here? I think because he's a 50% cattle dog, 50% pogo stick, I'm pretty sure. That is just bacon, like he gets up to here. I learned that the hard way. I got all the stuff, you know, I got everything up here. I went to celebrate with a coffee. I'm like, I feel pretty good. I'm gone 10 minutes, I come back. He jumped on the counter, took my bottle of depression meds. Because he hears him rattling, you know, he heard him. Tore him open, ate five. I call the vet, I'm like, my dog ate my depression meds, he's gonna die, I'm gonna die, we're all gonna die, help! Yeah, let me put you on hold real fast. What? <laughs> what, did she not take her meds, hello? She comes back, yeah, he's actually, he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be fine? Well then what am I taking him for? <laughs> Should I be taking grapes? Because those will kill him right now. She's like, yeah, he'll ride it out. That's what, she was that casual about it. Yeah, he'll ride it out. Just, you know, keep an eye on him for a couple days. And I did, I was so nervous. I'm like, I'm already making mistakes. I'm watching his every move. And he's just like groggy and just kind of like out of it, you know. Then two, three days later, man, he started getting up way earlier, you know. He had this like new zest for life that wasn't really there before. 
he started working on a novel he'd always wanted to write. I was like, wow, that's Zoloft. You are nailing it. That's, be cool if you'd maybe, you know, do that for me. <laughs> Stupid Zoloft. Who's on Zoloft, anybody? Exactly, nobody. It sucks. Well, Butrin, though. That's the stuff. Anyone doing Welbies? Come on. That's what we call them in the depression forums. I love Wellbutrin. That was the one I took that made me realize, like, oh, this is what they mean. Because I thought you take meds and they're just going to, like, zombie you out. You know, you won't be you. No, no, no. You get on the right one, it just, ma it just makes you feel what they've always described. And by they, I mean non-depressed people. Normal. Has anyone felt normal ever? Yeah, fuck you. Then. No, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm here to show off. No. Um, so so I, got, I got on him, and it takes like five days to kick in, and then one day, day six, seven, eight, I woke up and I was like, this is it. I feel it. I want tomorrow to happen. <laughs> I've never wanted that. This is great. I got in the car, went for a drive, drove by a cliff, actually looked up instead of down. Whoa! There's a sun up there, you guys. And it's shining on all of us. That's how I started feeling. I was like, oh, there's a future for me after all. I never thought about a year and a half from that day before ever. Started getting hard. I'm like, oh, two years from now, whoa. This should be every Wellbutrin commercial. Get hard for your own prospects. Wellbutrin, sign me up, let's go. And now, I talk about it all the time. I used to say, like, hold that stuff in, that depression stuff and that sadness, you know? Because I was raised in, you know, an old school, traditional family. My, my parents are, you know, old boomers. Like, they didn't feel shit back in the day. <sighs> they did not. My parents grew up in Lebanon, too. Feelings were largely outlawed. Like, you couldn't have any. <laughs> like, they don't know anything about like, depression and sadness, you know? My dad did a palm reading on me once and he was like, no calluses, you're gonna fail. I'm like, all right. <laughs> That's how they view things. I had a nervous breakdown in front of them a few years ago. I was crying and just, <gasps> I, I wasted my life. I'm not successful. You guys moved here from America and I failed you as a son. And my dad was like, have you tried working harder? I'm like, I just, I don't. <laughs> no calluses. That's what I come from, you know? And a lot of us do. A lot of us were sat down one day and given that conversation, how to be a man, you know? Do not cry. Do not feel anything ever. And do not stop and smell the roses because roses are fucking gay. <laughs> All right, old guy, God. That's the talk a lot of us guys got. You know, then we grow up and, you know, when real feelings come at us, sadness, fear, depression, we just, it hits us in a way and we're just like, Holy shit, this isn't football. What do I do? And you just push it all down and you add it to this ball of rage that's just been burning within and then you go get really drunk and fist fight a tree. <laughs> but something broke open in me, man. When I started when I started going to therapy and I got on on medication, I started like caring about my life and my future and really reevaluating like what it is to be a man and like want my my life to go forward. What like what do what do I value? And lately, I'm just like crying is pretty good. You know, I used to I'm gonna hold it in, and now I just sad commercial movie, just like anime style. It shoots out of the side of my face. It's great, and I'm still a man. I still think of myself as a man. You know, and so does my girlfriend. She doesn't mind if I cry. I still make her wet. <laughs> Mostly in this area right here as I nestle against her bosom. <laughs> I don't want to go on the road anymore. <laughs> no one shows up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Depression. And you know why people, people are, are uncomfortable? It's because we don't talk about it enough. Like we're starting to more. But people just have these like old world beliefs about what depression, or just like very limited, uninformed. People think depression is circumstantial. They don't think it's a chemical problem that you can't escape. 
You know, sometimes life sucks and you might feel good. And then you could win the lottery and be like, whatever. But some people are like, nah, nah, man. You know what? I know why you're sad. Girlfriend broke up with you. Get a blowjob, bro. That's that old school. Just get a blowjob, dude. It'll fix everything. Well, we didn't break up. Still get a blowjob, man. It's not about just get a blowjob and we'll continue this conversation. Everyone thinks it's like something happened to you. And that's not the case, you know? But people want to fill in that space. Like, if I sit there and I go, man, I'm just, I've been suicidally depressed for the last year. People get nervous and they want to fill that space in with advice and just words. This is awkward. No one ever says this. He looked me in the eye when he said it. What does that mean? I don't know what to do. Hey, man, uh, glass is half full. Remember, think of that half full glass. That's like one of those sayings. It always works. Haha, -ha, right? Grass is always greener. Is that one helping? Grass green. Get some of that water in that glass, put it on the grass, make it greener. What do you think? I think I want to kill myself more than ever now. What are you doing? Get a blowjob on the grass, man. Nice green grass, blowjob, sunlight, vitamin D. I think I want you to kill yourself now, actually, is where. All we want, listen. That's it. Just listen. Someone comes to you and they're like, I'm sad. I don't know what to do. I've always been this way. And I just like, th there's no reason to wake up. And I don't know if it makes sense. All we want is for you to go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm listening, I'm here for you. And we will feel a little bit better after we just let it out and know that you're not judging and you're just listening and that's it. Because some of the other things, man, are just, they, they make us feel almost worse. You know, grass is always greener. Oh, I don't even own a home, you know? <laughs> is that ever gonna happen? I have no idea. You really gotta be careful with what you say, you know? Sometimes people say something way off the mark. Hey, Nick. Just live every day like it's your last. <laughs> Careful, or I just might. <laughs> Weirdest one I've ever heard. I told a friend of mine, good friend. I was like, man, I've, I've had depression my whole life. And he was like, what, really, you? God, that's, I just can't believe that because you're, you're just so tall. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what does height have anything to do with it? I mean, granted, if I was short, I would have killed myself a long time ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> Could you imagine only being 6'1"? Ew. Oh, just like, hey, everybody, from way down here, come back to my tree where I make cookies, you know? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Obviously, I wouldn't have killed myself. I'd have been too short to reach the gun, so it wouldn't have been... I want to move forward as a man, you know? I don't, I, there's a lot of pushback on manhood. There's all these like old school, just bro guys that are like, these women are trying to feminize us. You're like, all right, dude, chill. We're gonna sharpen arrows in the woods next week. You want to come? <laughs> no, extra no. I'm gonna cry in my girlfriend's chest. You're not a man. <laughs> a friend of mine was showing me like, you, you want to know how to cook a steak, dude? I just watched the best video. Showed me on Instagram, which that was mistake number one, because he showed me one video of this dude, one of those long beards that he cuts into a square, you know, one of those guys. And he was like, cooking a steak on a cast iron skillet on the top of a mountain for some reason. <laughs> like he was camping or something, and he was like, this is how you cook a steak. And he showed that to me on my phone. And the algorithm on that thing is like, oh, you watch this one video? This is the only thing you ever want to watch now. So here's videos of guys with no sleeves and huge beards cooking steaks on mountaintops and then that guy's throwing an ax into a tree. And then I just kept getting more because I kept watching them. I'm like, these guys really, what are they doing? And they're just afraid, man. They're just like, no, dude, we're being feminized. Men have to be men. I'm like, what does that mean, men have to be men? Like, what, are we not men now? No, man, you gotta learn Krav Maga and Jiu Jitsu. You gotta learn how to throw an axe. You gotta learn how to sharpen arrows and cook a steak on a mountaintop. For what? <laughs> I got news for you, man. The nerds won. It's over. We don't need any of those skills. You don't know when the system's gonna go down, really? Because I think I just ordered a cock ring on Amazon yesterday, and it's being delivered via a drone right onto my dick. <laughs> The nerds won. They decided in the 90s, those nerds, we're giving up this Renaissance Fair stuff and we're just quitting Dungeons and Dragons. We're gonna get Teslas and boardrooms. Here we go. And the dudes that didn't want to let go of manhood are literally retreating into the woods with their arrows and their axes. 
They're the new Renaissance fair men. <laughs> One of my good friends, man, is, is like this. And we get into these arguments all the time. And he's like, he's extra broed out right now because he just had a, a baby. And it's a baby boy. So he's like, dude, this baby's going to be the president of the NFL and America, man. That's it. <laughs> he just won't stop pacing around. Dude, this is my baby. He's going to be the best. He's a man. He's going to build the buildings and innovate. I'm like, all right, dude. He's like, you'll see when you have a kid. I'm like, ah, look, I don't know. We're not going to have kids. My girlfriend and I don't want kids. But I'm still trying to, like, I, wanna, I don't want to argue with him, so I'm trying to bond with him, you know? So we're sitting there. I'm like, yeah, no, I mean, baby's great. He's like, it's different now, man. It's just like I can't go out anymore, you know? Got to be home with the baby, raise him to be the president of everything, you know? I'm like, yeah, no, I hear you, man. You know, I got the dog. When I got the dog, I couldn't, you know, go out as I play. I have to come home every four hours. He flipped. You're trying to compare your dog to my baby? It's nothing like it. I'm like, all right, dude, just chill. I, I know. And obviously we know. There's, I'm just trying to bond. We all know the difference. Dogs are way better than babies. Are you kidding? Come on, dude. And he's like, no, babies are better. I'm like, oh, really? Who would win in a fight? My dog or your baby? Let's go. You want to be a bro? Let's put him in a baby octagon. See who comes out even close to alive. Who went in a foot race? Your, your baby, my dog. My dog, pew, your baby's like, oh, I'm an idiot. And would just lay down there. Dog's picking up slices of pizza on a sidewalk. He's feeding himself. Come on. Your baby's like, I don't know what food is. I'm going to die. <laughs> What's he so, like, it just drives me crazy, this guy. Because he's like, he thinks he did, what, did you do something? What did you do? You had a kid. You didn't even have the kid. What did you do that was so awesome? What was the mountain you climbed? What did you get hard and come in the woman that you love? Whoa! That's never been done before. And then what did you do? Sleep for nine months while she did all the work? Then you woke up, you're like, oh, is it ready? Cool, thanks. Me, 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 me. Me, ego, maniacal. You know what I did? I rescued my dog. I saved him from the clutches of evil. I got him from an inhumane society. That's where he came from. I walked in, there was a dude with an Uzi and all these dogs lined up with cigarettes hanging out of their mouths and blindfolds. Broke that dude's arm, rescued 13 dogs that day. Parts of that story are true, all right? I'm just trying out the bro thing real fast to see how it feels. One of his favorite ones. Ever notice there aren't any female inventors out there? Like, yeah, yeah, there aren't. Hey, who wrote all of history until like 10 years ago? Probably a bunch of dudes. Come on. You don't think guys stole a couple of ideas for themselves? Come on, man. Guys invented the club. I'll, I'll give you that. We, we totally did, right? It's like it's big. It's destructive. Looks like a dick, you know? We're like, yeah, club. Guy probably invented that, brought it home to his cave, showed his wife, check this out, club. <laughs> She's working on her thing. He's like, what's that? And she's like, well, I'm calling it a wheel. Um, <laughs> we'll see, Here, here's what I'm thinking. And then she just starts rolling and he's like, whoa, honey, bam! <laughs> Guys, check it out, wheel, invented it. No, she's sleeping, she'll be fine, check out my wheel. How many of those happened? Countless. Women invented fire, hands down. Obviously. Right? Who was it? Dudes or the gender that's always cold all the time? <laughs> they saw a reason to innovate. They went for it. If anything, guys were probably like, it's not cold. No, I'm not cold at all, man. I'll wear even less stuff. I don't care. It's hot. If anything, I'll wear a leaf right here. That's all I need. Ice Age comes around. Damn it. I should have thought I had... His wife comes out all bundled up because she thought ahead, you know. Oh, well, 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 Mr. I'm never cold, idiot. <laughs> and she picked up his club and 15 minutes later invented the dildo. <laughs> that should be in a history book. So he's still, he's very much like, dude, you don't understand, man. You got to get off this. You, these women are feminizing you, Nick. They're feminizing you. Like, what do you, what do you mean? I'm telling you, man, 
They're trying to che- they're trying to castrate us guys. <laughs> really? It's interesting that you use castration as an example because you know who probably invented castration? Dudes. You think women came up with that a thousand years ago? Granted, they've perfected it since, but like that's a guy invention. That's how long guys have wanted women to stay way over there. That they were inventing a choir and they were like, all right, cool. We got all the bass voices that we'll ever need. We got that covered. Um, what are we going to do about that like higher register soprano thing? Oh, man. How are we going to... Just guys, any ideas? And then a couple guys came around like, look, brainstorming, no bad ideas, just throwing it out there. Maybe we hire a woman. Whoa, what are you, crazy? Hire a... Who's going to do the dishes, dude? These socks are going to fold them. This guy's insane. Be reasonable. I'm not going to hire a woman. We're going to cut Jerry's balls off. (laughs) That was the solution. That's what they came up with. (sighs) I have a girlfriend now. I love her. She's the best. She's very supportive. She honestly doesn't mind if I cry. She's it's great. She doesn't look look down on me at all for feel for trying to round myself out and be a whole person, you know? That's ultimately what I think. Guys could borrow more from women, you know, and just really really be more well rounded. Like actually feel things, man. Listen, communicate. We we are awful at that. And the reason I love my girlfriend so much now is because she like is patient with me and I'm patient with her and we we really listen to each other, you know? We never fight. We've never had a real full-blown argument. Like my last girlfriend, I met in an argument. <laughs> and then we're like, should we do this for two years? Yeah, let's do this for two years. I'm a stubborn Arab and she's a maniac. And all we did was fight. <laughs> she had road rage, which of course, because what's road rage? Fighting with someone you haven't even met yet. Like real road rage, you guys. Not like honk honk, you're mean, you know? I'm talking follow a motherfucker off the freeway (laughs) seven exits before our exit. I was afraid to drive with her. I thought I was going to die. This truck cut us off one day. This is in Los Angeles years ago. This truck cut us off and she's like, oh, no. And I'm like, here we go. We're going to be late to the movie. Here we go. And he didn't really cut us off. She just drove like a little tic-tac-shaped Toyota. And this guy had like a Ford F750 or something. You know, it was like this massive truck. And she's like, no, he's a motherfucker. So she follows him off the freeway. She's honking, trying to get his attention. Pulls up next to him. She's like, hey, ha. You know, he finally looks over. She rolls down my window, <laughs> takes the bottle of water that's in between us, and just chucks it at the window. And I was like, great. Now we're going to miss the movie because we'll be dead. That's great. That's great. <laughs> This guy looks over and he sees us yelling at each other and he like looks at her and then looks at me and I swear to God, he looks at me and goes, she's fucking crazy. And then drives off. (laughs) I'm watching this dude leave, you know? I'm just like... And then I start getting kind of sad because he gets to go home and I got to sit here and sort this shit out. And it occurred to me in that moment, I knew it was going to be over because I thought about what my therapist would always say. My therapist would say, you know, when you get into these arguments, just go to your separate corners and cool off for a minute. And there was nowhere to go because we're in a car. And then I was like, wait a minute. If your advice for fixing a relationship like that also describes the UFC, (laughs) this shit's over. We've got to get better at not fighting. Find someone less combative, you know? I found my girlfriend now. Oh, and we just, we, we work on our communication, but we also just gel in that way, you know? She doesn't like conflict. She'd rather just calmly, just no one talk about it. It's fine. It doesn't, we don't need to really, you know, it's fine. Everything's fine. We can just kind of patiently just sit here, just have a conversation. <laughs> Hello, is, is it over? Did, did I win? win? Like, what? Who taught you to argue a cat? This is great. This is amazing. <laughs> but you know, it's good. I mean, it's good to like to disagree. Obviously, you know, you need to have the. It helps you learn about each other. And sometimes she'll really just want it. No, no, no. It's not worth it. I'm like, no, babe. We can bring things to the table. Put them in the middle, and we sort them out. And sometimes it's just like pulling information out. You know. I'm just like, no, tell me what it is. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. She'll try and do it in the least combative way. She'll be like, I just, you know, think of 
just if certain things were done, there'd be different <laughs> outcomes. <laughs> wait, wait, well, who, what? <laughs> if people took certain actions, there'd be uh, different futures. <laughs> Is the FBI wiretapping our house? Like, <laughs> it's so fun. And that was a real back and forth we had. And then we had finally pulled it out, and it was, I forgot to buy movie tickets, so I, she thought I didn't want to go to the movie. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we can talk about that one. <laughs> we got to work at the communication thing. And we have, and it's been good, we have our outlets too, you know, because you still have to feel the anger. Like I have, uh, I have boxing, um, and she has something just as good, I think. <laughs> she has... True crime podcasts. <sighs> That's the NFL for women. They will sit on a couch and just scream, put me in the game, I can solve this. And I walk into the kitchen and my girlfriend's just yelling at her phone, this idiot detective, I could solve this. I could say they should put me in this case. The one from 1893. <laughs> I think there's a statute of limitation, but keep going, babe. Yeah, you yell at that. And by the way, uh, you're welcome, ladies. There wouldn't be true crime podcasts if guys weren't doing all the murdering. So. <laughs> women were doing all the killings. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome, ladies. If women were doing all the murdering, how boring would true crime podcasts be? This one's about an arsenic poisoning that took 45 years to complete. <laughs> Oh, did you watch that other true crime podcast about a girl who was impolite to her friend at a party? Yeah. And then she never told the friend about it and only told the boyfriend about it for six years. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that she loves them. I figured out why women really, really love them. It's because they can identify with these stories, you know? Women think like detectives because they have to. Every woman in a parking garage, oh my God, it's like a whole other thing. <laughs> You know, they're like, all right, how do I got to get in here, park the car, find it near an elevator, ground floor if possible, and make sure there's lights over me. My mace is ready, put my keys between my fingers. All right, ready to walk. <laughs> no guy's ever done that, ever. Here's every guy walking through a parking garage. God, it'd be so funny if monkeys could wear hats. <laughs> Dude, I, you know, I got to call. Hey, man. Get, get ready. Are you sitting down? Okay. Monkeys wearing hats. I know. We just got to find a way to monetize it. What am I doing? I don't know. I, oh, wait, I'm in a parking garage. Weird. I had no idea. I, no, I, I don't know. It's dark. It's really actually super dark in here. It's, there's only a couple flickering lights down at the end with a couple of shadowy figures that are... Oh, shit. Hey, let me call you back. I got to tell them about the monkey idea. <laughs> We watched the Zodiac movie together. Because I was like, oh, if you like True Crime Pie, you're going to love Zodiac. And it's a David Fincher film that was released a while ago. You know, Mark Ruffalo's in it. Great cast. Robert Downey Jr. And it's, for those that don't know, it's a movie, a fictionalized version of the unsolved killings in San Francisco by the Zodiac killer. I put the movie on, and uh, eight minutes into it, she's like, pause it. I know who did it. <laughs> What? <laughs> you? I'm pretty sure no one knows. No, I know. Pause it. Pause it. That guy right there. That guy right there. The guy crossing the street. That's an extra. We're never going to see that guy again. And then it just, she was pumped at that point. She's get pacing. She's not even on the couch. Anymore. Pause it. Who's that guy? Chief of police. I don't think he did it. Who's that right there? Mark Ruffalo's character. Who's that right there? That's my reflection. The TV's off. We're not doing this anymore. <laughs> But it made her feel good, man. It was it was fun. You got to communicate, man. You got to you got to feelings. You got to have them. You got to be open with them. Fucking is another huge one. You guys ever fuck? I started being more open. Like when we first started dating, I was like, I'm into some stuff. She's like, try me. I'm like, I like role play. She's like, what do you got? I'm like, all right. You're 19, I found you in a dumpster. Cool. Um, do I speak English? Do I know a language? I'm like, great note. I actually had never thought about that one before. Okay, you don't know languages. All I teach you is that anal's mandatory. She's like, cool, see you in the bedroom. I was like, wow. 
How about this? You're my stepmom. Looks like you're grounded. Ooh. <laughs> it's great. You got to find someone that you can vibe with when it comes to weird. And I don't, I don't even like saying weird. Between two consenting adults, there's just stuff you haven't tried yet. If you really think about it, anything after procreating, like fucking to procreate, is a fetish. That's really all we're here to do as, as, as humans. We're here to procreate, make new ones, die. You know what changed things? Agriculture. That's what did it, dude. You want to blame something? Blame agriculture. Before that, we're hunting and gathering. We didn't have time to try stuff. You're like, grab those berries, kill that lion. Am I 22? Boom, you're dead. Agriculture comes around. Then we have all kinds of time. You know, We're just sitting around bored watching these new things we call crops, and we're like, oh. Hey, check her out. Whoa, dude, there's two holes back there. Do you know that? Grab one of those corn things we just invented. I got an idea. <laughs> Off to the races after that. Fast forward a couple millennia, advertising comes into play. Then they start zeroing in on body parts, you know, guys with their six packs, girls with their, yeah. And the guys are like, yeah, all right, yeah. That's... They just haven't covered everything yet. <laughs> they haven't gotten to feet yet. Because people still think, you know, foot fetish. Gross. Is it though? Who has a foot fetish? <laughs> Statistically, someone in this room has a foot fetish. Oh, wait, it's me. I have one. I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, and I fucking do, and I love it. I do. I lean right into it. It's the best. And people go, oh, feel uh, gross. Why gross? Because you get dirty, and you want to, like, you want a girl who's been walking around barefoot in New York City for two straight weeks. <laughs> What? Why would I want that? <laughs> when people feel uncomfortable, all of a sudden they think the grossest version of that thing. Ew, gross, dirty, never cuts her nails. No, why is symmetry and, and cleanliness out the window now? <laughs> like if a guy came up and he's like, I love big tits, I'd be like, yeah, like really long, saggy, down to the ankle, just baked by the sun for 50 years, like fried egg tits. You want to suck on some fried egg? No. I go, yeah, perky, nice, whatever you want, man. Go have fun. <laughs> Feet aren't weird. You know, a lot of guys like legs. You know what's connected to a leg? <laughs> Fucking foot. <laughs> if anything, I'm just ahead. I have more stuff to like. You guys are like, ew. And I look down. I just, I basically see 12 tits down there. <laughs> Plus the two here, 14. I have seven times more stuff to jerk off to. But once they start doing commercials with girls just cracking open Bud Lights with their feet, guys are going to be like, toes! <laughs> just you wait and see. But we get along better because of that open line of communication. Feelings, fucking, got to have both of those. You know what else you got to have? This, is, this one's key. This one's really key. In order to have a good relationship, you must lie to her face. <laughs> Not in a bad way, not in a big way, in the little ways, you know? In the little ways. Like when she's arguing about, you don't wash the dishes, and, blah, 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 and you're like, this goes on for a while. You know what, you're right, boom! <laughs> Argument over. Guys say you're right all the time. Sometimes they mean it. The other 99% were lying to your face. And those are the lies that just, that, that'll let your day move on sometimes, you know? It's just, it isn't worth it. You look at her, you love her, and you just go, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry, lie, 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 lie. <laughs> and you're right back to video games. And I'll tell you how I learned this one. I learned this one the hard way, of course. I was sitting on a couch 10 years ago with the girl I was dating at the time. And, you know, we're, we're watching something, it ends. And then I just sort of drift off for a minute, you know. Then she looks over at me and she was like, what are you thinking about? And then I made the mistake of telling the truth. I looked over and I was like, nothing. When she looked over, she's like, oh yeah, nothing, that's cool, that's nice. What's nothing's real name, you lying motherfucker? You're thinking about the girl at the farmer's market with a big ass, you're thinking about her. I'm like, I wasn't until right now, but thank you. And I learned in that moment, I was like, oh, you know, women are too smart for that. They're not ever gonna believe that a guy is thinking about nothing 
But that's that's the secret. Guys are so fucking dumb that we can think so little that we can just idle out at like uh, uh, every once in a while we look over. Holy shit, she's still here. It's amazing. Uh, so you gotta lie, man. Gotta throw something fun and weird out there. What are you thinking about right now? Seriously, what are you thinking about? True crime podcast? Oh, that's cool. I like that. What are you thinking about now? I was just thinking that, like, it'd be really cool if every time, like, a flower died, a teddy bear would come to life. Get out of here. That, you're fun. You're silly like that. I like that. What are you thinking about now? You drifted off for a minute. What are you thinking about now? Honestly? Seriously? I was thinking that I love you so much. So much, babe. We're not even... I love you so much that I wish I could have your periods for you. Oh, my God. That is so romantic. Do you mean that? 100%. That is... You know, I wonder if that's possible. She Googles it for a while. And then you just bought yourself 20 more minutes of... Uh, 